Are you a diver who gets really into the zen of neutral buoyancy and just the floatiness of the whole diving experience? Or are you a person who needs a little bit more relaxation in your life? Stay tuned, I'm gonna talk about how you can get more meditative relaxation in your diving experience. If you've ever heard of the term floating, it's actually a meditative experience where people have these float tanks in their house that are filled with Epsom salts, kind of super saturated like the, the Dead Sea. So you're floating super high on it. It's at like almost body temperature, 95 degrees. And what happens is you're in there having a meditative experience. Some of these tanks have music. Most of them are dark. Some of them might have a bit of lights in there and you're just floating and meditating. Now, the thing that's nice about this, I, I've done kind of a lot of meditation in, in years past. Like I do these 10 day retreats. And for me, meditation is sort of a pain <laughs> management experience because sitting cross-legged and rigid for hours at a time, for me, was super painful. So I was at times just boiling in pain and there is some bliss there as well. That was just my experience. Your mileage may vary. So floating is a much more pain-free experience because you're not contorting your body, you're just relaxed in a position and letting it happen. All kinds of things happen. I'm not gonna talk about the mechanics of meditation. Your mileage may vary. Of course, relaxation is the ultimate benefit. Reduced blood pressure is one benefit and general relaxation. Now, I'm gonna talk about how to take that experience of floating into your scuba. What it is, you need to have a special kind of dive. It can't happen, for me, can't happen on every dive. And what you're doing is you are practicing being as motionless as possible while buoyant. So what that what that's going to entail? It's going to entail a special kind of dive. Can't be some. Well, it could be some surge if it's a regular surge. But it can't be probably a drift dive that you're fighting against stuff, or uh, you're going to have to have a special kind of buddy that understands that. Maybe they're doing the same thing, communicating what kind of area you're going to be in, and have some time on your hands. And what I do is I'll get in an area and I'll get in a good horizontal buoyant position and I will stop moving my body, right? I'll be whatever, a meter, two meters off, off the floor and I will stop moving and just get in position and stop moving for as long as possible. Tens of seconds or maybe even minutes if I can get to that point. And what I'll find is I'll get in that position and then relax more and more. So I'm relaxing. First, I have to trust to relax different parts of my body that everything isn't going to fall apart if I just kind of let it go on its own. Uh, still trying to keep in the good position, in the, uh, the trim position. I'll talk about why in a second. And relaxing. And then once my body's relaxed and I can trust myself that that position is going to maintain itself for some tens of seconds, then I start to work on my mind as well. You'll be surprised the kinds of things that you hold on to. If you're a meditator, you'll understand. Stuff that happened during the day. You leave, I'll even find that, like, like, thinking that I'm relaxing my brain tissue. Like, it, oh, my brain feels tight and relaxing the tightness of my brain is actually maybe an internal thing that's actually relaxing your thoughts. I find it works for me. I'm imagining that my brain is kind of tight and kind of relaxing the brain. Your face is also a place that holds a lot of tension. And so you get in that position, tens of seconds, holding on to it, just super relaxing, letting the breathing really go wherever it's going to go, right? obviously continuing your breathing and sit with that. Now, things that help. It helps if there's something a little bit, a little bit visually interesting to look at, not too visually interesting, otherwise you're going to get involved. Also, water cannot be too cold. If you're beyond a certain amount of coldness, for me, it's going to be really hard to relax to that point. What inevitably is going to happen, especially when you start on this path, is you're going to start losing your trim a tint or losing your buoyancy occasionally. What I try and do for my buoyancy is I will kind of unconsciously or semi-consciously adjust my breathing for the buoyancy as much as possible. That's one habit that you want to get into. You definitely don't want to be you know, working on your, your BC during this process is going to totally take you out of that mindset. At least it takes me out of that mindset. So you're going to want to depend on your, your lungs for adjusting that micro buoyancy as you're breathing. You're going to do this, right? You're going to be moving up and down. Also, another fine point. So there's forward and back trim, forward and back trim, and there's also side to side trim. Check out my video on trim if you haven't seen it. It's a good way to, to work on your body English. Now, what I find is if you're used to in your resting position, if you're keeping your fins close together, you're more liable to rock side to side. Whereas my, what I try and do when I'm, when I'm paying attention, and of course, there are times that I don't, my legs, my feet are out with my fins like this, out, which 
makes, if you think about it, just like outriggers for a canoe, a canoe without outriggers is, is pretty tippy. If you put an outrigger or two outriggers on a canoe, it becomes much more stable. Your body's the same way. Get your outriggers out there and you're going to find you're much more stable. Also, some people get in the habit of putting their fins upward because it's more comfortable for them, perhaps. And if you think about that, this has more resistance against the water. This has less resistance. This will be tippier. So your best chance of a stable position, get in a good trim balance that works, get your legs out with your, your fins horizontal, and that's going to be your best chance of being resistant to tipping. So get the most stable position that you can and then sit with it and see how long you can sit with it without twitching a single muscle. That should be your goal. Not a single muscle working to maintain that buoyant trim position. And then after you get the physical part down, that mental part you can really start to work on and get some really nice relaxation and zen. Now, occasionally, as I said, you're gonna lose your trim. It's just gonna happen. You're gonna lose your body English. That happens, what I do for myself, I'm a person who kind of beats up on myself easily. So what I promise myself during these kinds of sessions, uh, you know, maybe my legs will fall or something. I'm not gonna beat myself up. There's no emotion about it. It's just, I'm going to correct it and continue on. There's no beating up. There's no, that was good, that was bad. It just was. I'm gonna correct it, restart my relaxation, continue on. A little demo. Here I am this past weekend at the end of the dive on the safety stop, uh, mellowing out. And as you can see, the arms are down, the head is down, uh, the legs are up because I need that to have the trim position. There's my dry suit hose of shame. I was supposed to dive dry and I changed to wetsuit. I was too lazy to change the hose out. So here's what it looks like. Be honest, it is easier to do when you're moving. Give a little kick moving forward as you're moving, just getting into that zone. It is definitely more challenging in the stopped position, but give it a try. Inevitably, you're going to find those corrections happen less and less, and your relaxation will get deeper and deeper. So I'll correct, I'll rebring my brain down to where it was, and just zoning on, on whatever I'm doing. Maybe every once in a while, I will check my buddy to make sure that, that uh, they're, they're into it as well. I even do it as I'm moving. So I'll move, I'll move, you know, I'll take a, I'll take a big frog kick and then glide and just, you know, maybe for tens of seconds, I'm just in that zone and just forgetting about things, just letting, letting it happen. What you might find, what I find, I get put into this relaxed state that lasts after I get out of the water. And sometimes I can even feel it the next day. It so happens that this weekend I had a, a super relaxing dive or two, and today I'm feeling pretty mellow. I still, and today's, today's the second day after. Yesterday, I was totally mellow. Just, just feeling that Zen effect. It's amazing. And I'm not a big meditator. I'm, that, you know, I'm not talking to any you know, guru here. I'm just you know, a regular guy who's you know, trying to relax. <laughs> One other positive effect you're going to see is your hair consumption will just plummet. Uh, the, actually, this, again, I've been diving a long time, as you know, and I, I have a fair number of dives under my belt. And this weekend, I, mean, I had two variables going on. I had a new regulator, um, which I might talk about in another video, the new Apex regulator. And I do find that the, the precision of the delivery of that regulator was, was helping me, I think, reduce my, my air intake. But I was practicing my Zen this weekend, and, and I had a dive that had by far my lowest uh, air consumption ever. I was... I kind of amazed myself. And, and if, you, if you know anything about, if you've been doing something a long time to get any improvement, it's a pretty hard battle to fight. If you've been playing tennis for 20 years to really improve your forehand one day is pretty difficult. Um, yeah, I had, a, I had a great experience this weekend. My, my air consumption on that one dive went way down and I was, I was just you know practicing my Zen. Give it a try. So you need the right buddy, the right location, and the right conditions, including temperature. So the kind of person that this is gonna help someone who has uh, maybe a bit of tension, maybe you got some high blood pressure like I do. I'm, I'm kind of borderline these days. I'm fighting to, to get it down. And what you're going to find is it's going to lead to more relaxation during your dives. It's going to increase the heck out of your buoyancy because that's where you want to be. You want to be that you're, you're putting as little 
attention and energy into your trim and buoyancy as possible. Okay, well, I hope this gives you some insights to something to practice to work on. Please post up if, you, if you've tried this and if you work on it a bit, if you have any positive results to, to offer for other folks, be all ears on it. Hey, thanks again for joining in. I appreciate uh, everybody stopping by. If you get any value and if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, be happy to have you on as a subscriber. It helps the channel. I will see you on the beach next time.